I'm Oscar and I'm Dan and today we are in Al Ula Saudi Arabia Previously on Oscar and Dan Oh yeah! <laughs> Whoa. Oscar, where are we going? We are driving to our next accommodation, which is, I think, gonna be uh, pretty cool. At least very unique. We'll see how good it is, but it's gonna be very unique. The location is amazing. So last night we stayed in a very interesting and different place, right? Tonight is also very interesting and different, but uh, hopefully a level above yesterday. <laughs> Good, how are you? I'm good. Getting welcome bracelets. <laughs> my, my hand is a bit too heavy. <laughs> okay, shukran. Beautiful. Okay, heading to the room. Such a beautiful location. Look at this. Wow. This is our little uh, caravan. I can't wait to see inside and behind it. Because there are practically no photos of the inside of the caravan on the website. They only opened this on January 1st this year, 2022. It's like brand new. So let's see what it's like. Here's our terrace. So this is our terrace. The view is crazy. If there was like a plunge pool here, oh my God, that would be... I'm just trying to find the best possible place to stay for the rest of our trip, specifically in Alula. And I'm trying to find something, but there's pretty much no options whatsoever. The ones that still have space are very, very low standard. So we booked two nights at the most expensive place possible, which I doubt will be worth it, but we'll see no tourism infrastructure, even in Alula, which is supposed to be the place for tourists. There's pretty much no hotels. Yay! Welcome to our little home. We love Karen Aid. I feel like I'm Kara right now. Like, look at this, it's amazing. Welcome into our home. This is uh, where we're staying for two nights because it's way too expensive to stay any more than that. It's actually better than I was expecting because we saw like two pictures or something on Google Maps and I was like, that's what we paid for. But it's actually really cool. So we have a refrigerator, a big one. Oh, it has a handle because it's a van. Freezer, yeah, whatever. Storage, a big closet. We have towels, yay. Which is rare to give at hotels in Saudi Arabia, we learned. Here's the shower. Woohoo! Oh my God. Whoa. Actually bigger than I thought. It smells really good in there. Then, le toilette. I think there's a way to open. Oh yes. So you can have a bit of a view of the desert from bed. Here's obviously for privacy. I have to say the beds are very skinny. No, honestly, this is so nice. I'm really, really excited to be staying here. The kitchen. There's actually a microwave and even a stove, but it's covered. So I guess they don't want us to cook. This massive sink. I'm going to wash my face and do whatever here. And here we can sit and work with views in that direction, views in that direction. Just live life. I'm busy living the van life for two nights. Yes. <laughs> I think two nights of van life is the maximum that we are going to do ever. I just don't know how our massive bags are gonna fit in here. I just realized. I wanna try this. I'm very intrigued. Okay. <laughs> well, there's no back support, obviously. Okay, going back in. Your feet get instantly sandy. I already actually noticed sand on the floor. Yeah, it's an air. Airstream. Oh, sorry, we know nothing about vans and this kind of stuff. So I'm supposing these vans must have been used for something else, or they were built to be actual vans and not for the actual resort because there's so much storage. Yeah, we're getting the real van life experience for two nights in the desert <laughs> in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Where are we guys? So we're here at a matam, a restaurant, to have some breakfast. Lentils, beans, and more beans. And this is significant because we didn't eat a single real meal all day yesterday. So this is our first real meal in two days. And we are eating here on the floor. It's quite dirty, so <laughs> spread out too much. Okay, the food is here. I love how all our three dishes look exactly the same. <laughs> Move the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like the most delicious pizza. <laughs> Okay, that was a stunning drive. We're here at Desert X, which is an art exhibition in the desert. Here we go. Sandwich. 
made it to the actual site. It's huge. Probably like the most infrastructure heavy place we've been to so far. This is the map and we are here exactly here. And we have the name of the artist and the artwork and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much. So there's someone at each artwork who we can ask. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Every each. How to cover everything, roughly? Uh, if you like, you go like this. <laughs> Two hours. Okay. If you would like a quick, a quick, one hour. Okay. okay. And enjoy. If you have any questions, any comments, please let me know. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Wow, 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 desert playground. Look, I hate my chin diaper, but you gotta do what you gotta do out here in the desert. Every single woman we've interacted with has been so nice and so talkative and funny. this is free because the amount people would pay to come and take Instagram photos here would be like exorbitant. Now look at this transition. Is this a mirror? Is it yes. a desert? I think it's a mirror. It is a mirror. <laughs> wow, it's so trippy. Dan on his throne. You, my dishes. You, my laundry. We're having some coffee now. We just saw two works of art out of 14. It took us about 45 minutes. 45 minutes? <laughs> yeah, we better hurry up to see okay. the rest. Sandstorms here are <laughs> no joke. Oh no, it gets even worse. Oh, it's like this part installation much better. Oh, I have sand in my mouth, in my shoes, in my clothes, in places I don't even want to talk about. So this is actually an internationally traveling art exhibition. It was started in the US and this is the second edition of the exhibition in Alula. Next year's edition is gonna be in Coachella, apparently. Probably the most different places on this planet. So you know it's just really amazing. We had the greatest guy explain two art pieces to us. And he was saying how this one behind me is basically supposed to be like Mirage, which was literally what their ancestors survived off. They would look for it and know that there's water nearby. So they would go there and if there wasn't water, their bet wouldn't pay off and they would die. This is, you know, a symbol of what was so important previously in this region. And nowadays, the reason it's made in aluminum, not only does it sort of imitate the shape and the color and everything of water, but it's supposed to show the contrast between modern day technology and innovations to the struggles of the past and show their ancestors that look now we're making this water with a sort of high-tech material and we're, we're not struggling with this problem anymore wow we just drove a beautiful stretch we're here right by the world's largest mirrored building it's a building that is a mirror we'll show you exactly what it is <laughs> So I think we're coming back here tomorrow uh, as well, so we can see it in daylight. Good morning, guys. This is what we're waking up to here. still keeping all our luggage outside of the van because there's literally no space inside. <laughs> We've taken out pretty much everything we thought we were gonna need. I mean, we could have used the storage space, I guess. We didn't really have the effort to do it. So this is the mess we're currently living in. I'm not sure if this is like a normal problem to have in a van. I'm sure it is, but out here on the terrace or pretty much all the round of the van, it smells like uh, sewage, like not 
a little bit but a lot so yeah it's a little bit off-putting when you're out here trying to enjoy the view and you're like mm, i feel like a sewage rat right now it is what it is we are about to go for breakfast we think yeah we're gonna try to find something here in the trailer park saudi arabian trailer park. <laughs> we slept uh, i guess okay Not so well, no. yeah So all the like main restaurants are at the other Habitat's resort. They're not here where the like camper vans are. The only real options here are two different food trucks. So we're having that. After that, we're gonna head to Hega. Vegan toast. Do you wanna try it or should I try it? You try it. But I feel like you always have the better reactions. <laughs> You're the care of this. <laughs> it looks very healthy at least. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's actually good. That's a big reaction for Oscar. Mm. So today is our fifth day in Saudi Arabia. Today was the first night where I felt very uneasy all night. This whole time we've just been paranoid about what we say, like anywhere we are, even in private. Because when you talk to people about anything besides, you know, very casual stuff, everyone whispers, everyone comes very close and speaks very, very quietly. Add on to that the fact that we really can't be ourselves whatsoever. Every word we say, we have to, you know, think about beforehand. This is way more intense than anywhere else we've been. And we're starting to feel like, okay, we're ready to not have to feel so, you know, restricted. All right, so we are about to head to pretty much the number one tourist site uh, here in Alula, which is the old ancient city of Hegra. And in order to get to Hegra, you need to catch the bus. But then there are other options like you can bike around it, you can uh, go horseback riding, and you can even go in a private Land Rover, which was not in our budget. <laughs> so uh, yeah, going on the bus is what we're doing. This sort of climate and temperature here, like it's so cold and at the same time it's so hot. Three? Yes, let's get three. Shukran. So we have some dates, we have some candied fruit, and uh, the Arabic coffee. Oh, sorry, that's another thing. We're only allowed to call it Saudi coffee. So Hegra was part of the Nabataean kingdom, I think I'm pronouncing that sort of correctly, which was actually the same kingdom that Petra was in. And Petra was the largest city, the capital city. Hegra was the southernmost city in the kingdom, the second largest one. You can definitely see the resemblance here between Hegra and Petra, but the major difference is that this is situated in a vast, like, open field with only, like, rock formations here and there that they have carved out the buildings in. Whereas in Petra, you know, obviously it's a lot more sort of dense with the rock and there are a lot more buildings. So Oscar and I were both saying that we agree that this feels sort of like a mix between Cappadocia in Turkey and Petra in Jordan. It's a very beautiful, beautiful place. We're also not allowed to go off path or go anywhere else besides where the guides say so. Before we came here, we knew that it was quite recently that they opened up this site for people to see, but we didn't know it was as late as in November 2020. I'm not entirely sure if Saudis could come here before that. So one thing you can notice, and a huge contrast to what it's like to visit Petra in Jordan, we are on such a specific schedule. You can't go off on your own at any point. At each location, there is a specific guide that tells you about it, which I can definitely understand given that it's been closed for so long. I don't know how long it's gonna take for them to kind of loosen up a little bit about tourists being here, but I guess it's gonna take a while. This mountain right behind me has a total of 31 tombs and they all belong to women, actually. The gates have all different kinds of symbolisms. Some is influenced by Greek mythology. You have some things that are inspired by the Romans and then others that are inspired by the Egyptian civilization. So it's just so cool how this brings you back to that time with all these ancient great civilizations. We 
are back at the Mariah during daytime today and we expected it to be crowded but there's actually less people now than there were last night. So for some reason you kind of have to book to come here but there's actually not a person in sight. It's really just one big mirror in the middle of the desert. <laughs> we want to admit how much time we just spent trying to get perfect shots here. <laughs> I mean this is mostly just for photos because in real life the mirrors are sort of jagged but I think if you see it on Instagram you'll be like whoa. You will be shook by our photos. Final stop of the day. I always say Lion Rock. It's of course not called that. We are at Elephant Rock. Beautiful sunset here and we are sitting around the elephant rock in our little, uh, what would you call this? Our hole. <laughs> our little den. So Keith works in money. <laughs> In finance. Yeah, and we've been talking about investments and uh, all that type of stuff, which feels very funny to be sitting in the desert and talking about that. But then again, we're in the Gulf, which is all about flashy and riches. I guess it's the appropriate place to talk about money. <laughs> Next time on Oscar and Dan. Here we are at the second holiest place. And you're not invited. You don't know anyone there, but everyone else knows each other. Where are you from, guys? Sweden. 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 Yes. Yeah. Kind of like a large gated community. We're getting so much FOMO. Yeah.